Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Ryan Sullivan Show, episode 50. Bam, 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 bam. Did you know my name is John Legend? But J A W N Legend. John Legend, because I stay legendary with my Jonathans. Listen. Welcome to the 50th episode of the Ryan Sullivan Show podcast, and it's a special edition. Why? Because we're doing a food guide to Montreal. We have a lot to run through, because I'm going to tell you why I like all these places, and why are we doing this at all? Because 100 people have messaged me, where should I get food? Yo, I'm in town, where should I get food? Also, um, I already forget. Uh, and by a hundred, I mean like four, but typing this out four times has been a pain in my rear end. So I'm just going to, I published a list on my Instagram story. I published a list and I'm going to do a video version in celebration of the 50th anniversary, AKA episode. I got a pot of Folgers drip coffee ripping in the background. I'll probably duck out and grab a cup of that in a second, but this is my like food guide, but this isn't just like, Oh, the most heated food in Montreal. No, I keeps it real. I keeps it 100 with you. This is a food tour. This is a golden list that many, many men, Wish death upon me, Lord, am I ever to be? So you come to Montreal, it's raining outside, you put 50 cent, get rich or die trying in your headphones, and you complete this list, you will achieve God status. You will unlock God status on them. Bro, I'm all jacked up on Trader Joe's espresso beans, and I'm ready to go. It's episode 50. So... The F1 Food Guide for My Peeps Visiting Montreal by Ryan Patrick Sullivan. Let's go! Okay, we've got... What are you in for? What are you subscribing to right now? Well, brunch, lunch, dinner, pizza, burger, poutine. I stayed away from coffees because I'm not a coffee connoisseur. I actually don't like paying $5 for a coffee. And I stayed away from bakeries because I have... I'm again, I'm not a connoisseur. I try to stay away from bread. It's my favorite thing on the planet is just bread, just bread with cold salted butter, RIP. And I'm gone for the weekend. I'm on a bender (laughs) and I'm bloated Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but this is to, you will see Montreal. Well, haters are going to be like, you didn't even talk about Montreal West. You didn't even talk about the South shore. Yeah. Shut up. This is my food guide tour. You want to see my lens southwest, a little bit of the old port? I got you, bro. So here we go. For brunch, we have Arthur's. Arthur's. Wow, I said the first name wrong. We have Arthur's Bagel. Uh, no, we have Arthur's at number one. Arthur's Nosh Bar, number one. It's in St. Henry. It is just delectable, delicioso. It's also a fashion show when you go there. You better come correct. Prada bucket hat. Maybe some Givenchy. But it's a scene. It's an Instagram thirst trap. And if you aren't phone friendly, don't go to Arthur's. People will be on their phones bussing, you know, bird's eye shots of your shit nonstop. Uh, Instagram thirst trap, super yummy food, always a lineup, but Arthur's, you know, if you know somebody, <laughs> you don't have to wait. Bagels, etc. Cute, rustic, like 70s vibes in there. Great decor. It's on St. Laurent, so you're in a great area to just walk up and down the boulevard before or after. Um, bagels, etc. has a bagel heavy menu, as the name suggests. Super delicious. The huevos rancheros bagel and the uh, like plate or the um, eggs Benny. Also amazing breakfast sandwich. Beauties coming in at number three. Always a lineup. Not enough seats. Owned by, I think he passed away two, three years ago, but it was owned by a Jewish family for like six million years. And just like super classic Montreal diner, but elevated slightly diner. Like Jewish diner, 
And if you don't know what that means, they have latkes and milkshakes. Latkes and milkshakes is what a Jewish diner means. I don't know about the milkshake, but anyway, whatever. That's like a very common, you'll see a lot of milkshakes coming out with, you know, the metal tin. They serve your milkshake in a glass cup and they give you the metal tin also with all of the extra in it. So it's really like four, mm, four or 5,000 calorie milkshake. <laughs> anyway. A great light combo if you're going to be doing some walking, going up and down, walking down on the mount. That's the iconic place, the hill with the cross on top. You just pick up some St. Vieter bagels, pick up a half dozen St. Vieter bagels, a Liberté cream cheese, and you just dunk and smash. Dunk and smash, walk across the street, down a block to Olympico and get yourself a latte. Um, Just... One of the, I, the, the first thing I did when I moved here was I, someone was like, um, you got to go to Olympico. And I went to Olympico. It was summer. It was June. The Habs were in the playoffs and I got an iced latte and I was like, wow, I love this place. Um, and then classic diner vibes, Southwest pop on down to green spot in St. Henry. Um, busy, but quick turnover, pumping them up, pumping them out. You slide in there, you can get everything from a smoked meat sandwich to a um, uh, eggs eggs and sausage, whatever. <coughs> Diner vibes. <coughs> Breakfast, lunch, dinner. It's always open. It's not 24 hours, but like kind of is type place, you know. Greasy Spoon also ranks on the poutine list. Um, but Green Spot has... Uh, anyway, we got to keep it moving here. And that's it for the brunch list. Of course, there, it goes on and there's all these fancy places and blah, blah, blah. Those are my favorite. Arthur's, Bagels, etc. Beauties. I forgot Cafe Gentile. Nice place, more of a bakery, but great breakfast sandwich, good coffee. St. Vieter Bagel and Olympico. And then Green Spot. Also, bonus round. If you happen to be in Point St. Charles, which you probably aren't, but if you are, <clears throat> my favorite breakfast sandwich in Montreal is at Cafe or Clark Cafe. Clark Cafe. But Clark Cafe is on my lunch list. So double feature, fuck it. Clark Cafe, best breakfast sandwich in Montreal. For lunch, we start talking about lunch. We talking about lunch now, doggy? Well, Ramados. Portuguese charcoal grill chicken. Chicken, chicken. You walk in there, there's 600 chicken rolling on the black charcoal. They have like some loophole where it's like, it's so old that it's considered a heritage site. And so that's why they have, they're allowed to use a charcoal grill. This might be totally false. Don't quote me on this. Don't call up CBC News, the passionate eye. I don't know if that's true, but I think it is. It's just been around so, because typically you're not allowed to have a charcoal fucking fire pit inside because fires. But Ramados Portuguese chicken, ridiculous. And then you get the creme little diskies. The creme little, uh, you know, a, a tart. The Portuguese tarts. Forget the name. Bang-tastic. Patati patata, number two. Love this spot. Corner wall, capacity for eight people in there. Standing up. It's... A club bathroom in there. Their sole fish, sole sandwich with side of poutine and a Diet Coke for lunch is a little tiny park across the street. Forget about it. One of the greatest Montreal lunches that exist. Serrano. Portuguese again, but they do the rotisserie spit. It's on St. Vieter. You will see them spinning in the window and you'll know you are home. They have an insane Chris sandwich, so thigh sandwich, chicken sandwich. Also, unsung hero, and for like $4.50, you can get the sausage sandwich. Portuguese sausage, cut up lettuce, tomato, onion, spicy mayo. Whoa, oh, ultimate fresh roll. The fresh rolls at Serrano really do it. And you can hear when they cut into it that <laughs> amazing. Uh, Olive and Gourmando, if you're in the old port, which most of you fucking yuppies probably are, 
Olive and Gramondo is really good. Their Cubano sausage is second to none. They have a great soup program. They have pastries. They have it all. It's a tourist trap. It's really good, though. But you're spending $40 on a sandwich and a beverage. But Old Port, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, Epicery Lulu, new spot, right in my neighborhood. Might go there today. Uh, Lebanese spot, amazing. I've had it just once, but... It's an authentic Lebanese spot that goes toe-to-toe with one of my other favorite lunch spots or Lebanese spots in the city, which is Omnivore. Same thing. The Omnivore Jaj Wrap is one of my favorite things to eat in this city. It's a cylinder. It's a barrel of flavor. You know, you go to these shawarma spots or these, I don't know, and you just get a football. They give you a football and you open it up and the first bite's great, but you're three, four bites in and the thing is just... It comes inside out. It's like the alien in Alien coming out the belly. And you're like, for fuck's sakes. And you're RIP to your breath at any of, at both of those spots. But Epicery Lulu is beautiful. It's new. I went there. I reviewed it. They loved the video. Um, I got to leave my personal stuff aside for this. But whatever. I'm giving you my experience. They DM me. They're like, yo, thank you so much for the video. Um, very fire. Check them out. Go get a chicken shawarma at Lulu. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about chicken sandwiches. Two, you want fried chicken? Okay. Jack LeCock and Bucky Roosters. Jack LeCock and Bucky Roosters, very similar product, not similar price. Bucky Roosters does have a little bit more power in the flavor department, in the ingredients department, but the price... You're not coming out of Bucky Roosters for less than 50 bucks usually. And um, Jack LeCock is like almost the same. So pick your poison, right? Both are amazing. You slightly premium, more premium product at Bucky Roosters, but slightly more premium price. Get what you pay for. That's what I love about Montreal is you get what you pay for pretty much. Jack LeCock has a nice... You know, there's like 10 or 12 different sandwiches. You can get different sauces on each, and it's just like good fried chicken sandwich. Um, My favorite lunch spot. So favorite lunch spot, Arthur's. Favorite lunch spot, McKiernan. You pull up to McKiernan at 1.30 on a Saturday with one or two friends, and just tell them you're hungry. That's it. Accept you're spending $100 to $150, and just tell them you're hungry. They'll be like, okay. They'll be like, okay. They'll be like, okay. Oh, what an experience. Oh, and they have specials. And the venue, the venue. Sometimes you can't go to McKiernan on a Saturday because the venue is so beautiful, it often gets booked out for the weekend for weddings. Lunch at McKiernan is, ooh. But yeah, if you go walk in there, being like, I'm I'm totally cool with dropping 120, 150. Oh my god, you're gonna have a time. You're gonna have a gastric experience like none other. McKiernan's my favorite place to have lunch in Montreal. Moving on, and also in the pizza category, Adamo. If you're in the Southwest doing a canal walk, get a slice of Adamo. Oh, New York style pizza. Played softball with Tony for years. He's doing it right. Um a little trip south of the border, and by that I mean north, and on Avenue de Pain, uh, or no, Roy, Avenue Roy in the plateau, La Chilenita, Empanada Heaven. You walk in there, they don't fuck around, man. Plastic chairs and tables, they know what they have. They know what they have. They don't need to, they don't need to impress you with jack shit. These guys are like wholesaler empanadas. The, f- the front is just like plastic tables and chairs, a counter, and then just like one sort of chilled display that will be full with like, you know, eight different empanadas. But the, the back kitchen is a warehouse. And you just, you poke your head back there, you just see massive mixing bowls and big ovens. Like these are empanada wholesalers. You want to buy direct? These are, this is the main line, bro. You, you know, touching the, touch the supplier. Amazing just delicious um la chilenita empanadas spectacular um as mentioned before clark cafe for lunch italian sandwiches 
Rest the fucking peace. Forget about it. Tony Frank, good friend of mine. Uh, amazing sandwiches. It's hard to pick one. I love the Mortadella sandwich. They have fancier shit. They have more eclectic shit. Like they're, um, oh, I forget the name, but it's like the pork. Italian pork. Can't remember what it's called. There's a name for it. You know what it is. Pancetta? No. But it's like roast. Roast pork. It's not It's not slice cold cut. It's like roast. It's insane. Have to eat it immediately, though. But the uh, mortadella sandwich, um, like, I would recommend you you pull up on Clark Cafe at, 10, at 11 a.m. Grab yourself a mortadella sandwich, a pastry, a coffee. Walk from Clark Cafe to the Old Port. Have your coffee. Get to the Old Port. Eat your mortadella. Eat your mortadella in the Old Port. <sighs> Forget about it. Petit Sao, also in the Southwest. Uh, just a good Vietnamese spot. It's a bit fusiony, like white people Vietnamese, but it's just so yummy, dude. Like they have, they charbroil the chicken. Their chicken, I forget what it's called. I think it's called Sunrise Chicken. I don't know why. It's Sun. Sun is somewhere in the title. It's not a breakfast thing, but vermicelli noodle, um, some veggie, some beans in there, green beans, and the chicken is really, really good. Um, we got to keep it moving. Um. Caribbean, Season Dreams. There's a few, but on my list here, it's Season Dreams. Great jerk chicken, great mac and cheese, great fries. I mean, coma, you are dead after it. You are dead. But if you want um, some good Caribbean food, Haitian, Season Dreams, very good. Montreal, I don't know enough about Haitian, and I should. There's a massive Haitian population here, and so there's a lot of Haitian options. Um, and I know of a few boom jays as well. And then there's, uh, Berg's, which I fought for like a year walking past it every day it was a burger joint. It's not, it's a Caribbean joint. <laughs> uh, and Berg's is funny cause they know how good their food is and they treat you like shit. And you kind of love that. Don't you, you walk in and they're like, Ugh. you know, and you're like, please, can you serve me? And they're like, what do you want? And it's walk in, walk out only On to the dinners tuck shop. Number one, if someone's like, here's daddy's credit card, where do you want to go for dinner? Tuck shop. You're spending a couple hundo. But you walk in there, and they are so nice, and the environment is so... It's small. There's maybe 40 people capacity. It, the food, and the staff, and the oysters, and the steak frites. Oh, oh. And the specials. Last time I was there, I was like, I don't like eggplant. Well, now I do. This is a restaurant that will change your mind about food that you're not sure about. That night, the last time I went, I, I was never a fan of eggplant, and I was never a fan of raw tuna. Like them now. Like them now. Amazing staff. Gorgeous food. Gorgeous food. Um... Also in the higher end, um, like que Montreal, like gastro, French bistro cuisine, you have Garde Manger, Chuck Hughes' spot, just, just Yumtown. Same thing as Tuck Shop, just like Premier Eats. Maison Public, same thing. Maison Public has an authenticity that I've never seen anywhere else. You will see one of the, sh like I went there one time, and one of the chefs, like, there's something about Montreal, like other cities, Calgary, Vancouver, Toronto, like fancy, like expensive cuisine is so exclusive. It's so elite. It's so the decor and everything, like you feel uptight. Montreal doesn't do that to you. You can have that. But like the world renowned, like highly sought after Montreal restaurants like dinner restaurants are so real like it's real people it's real service they take their shit seriously don't get me wrong it's not casual 
But like I went to Maison Public one time and the guy was roasting lobster on the sidewalk. On a cooker on the sidewalk. Take it easy. And um and if you're into wine lists, to all these places for dude, Quebec and wine lists, like what it's dime a dozen. You need like whatever. Um, but Maison Public, Garde Manger, Tuck Shop, all spectacular. Um, there's an honorable mention there to Joe Beef. Liverpool House, same thing. It's it's one of those places you got to reserve three three months in advance if you want a table before nine thirty. You might you can slide in for last service uh, when the staff is cranky and shitty and they've been up from two days doing whatever. Uh, but but uh, yes, honorable mentions to those places. McKiernan also for dinner. Two time two time show up. McKiernan's I think my favorite place to eat in the city. Um Saute Brothers in the Southwest. Amazing Amazing Asian fusion. Bomb bomb food. Super good. Uh I gotta hurry up on this list. Uh Kazu. Kazu should be top of list. It is a gem. Kazu is Japanese cu- cuisine. It's not sushi. It's Japanese food. I don't know how to explain it because I'm not that well traveled. I'll admit. But go get your head blown off at Kazu, bro. You will be like, you'll look at the menu and be like, I don't know what this stuff is. But just order a bunch of different things and you'll be like, what the hell? Like people who move away from Montreal and then come back to visit, go to Kazu. Not Joshin. I haven't been there in a few years. It reminds me, I got to get back. Um, that's the dinner list. Oh, Loic. No, I forgot a bunch. Loic. Loic, amazing. Outstanding. Also on the burger list. Loic has great, great food. It started as a wine bar, but they have a kitchen that will fucking get you, and you'll be like, suck a motherfucker. The food here. It is a bar that turned into a restaurant, and now it's a restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Because the shit popped in so hard. Um, L'Express, French cuisine in the plateau, also on the list. And then Sumac, uh, Middle Eastern dining. Very, very good. On to the fun stuff. We covered brunch, lunch, and dinner. We've now got pizza, and we start things off with a demo, uh, which I think is in the lunch list. Yeah. New York Slice. Honestly, my favorite pizza is not in Montreal. And trust me when I say I love pizza. I've tried many, many types. My favorite pizza is in Calgary, Alberta, by the name of Gus's Pizza. But in Montreal, Adamo Pizza, Cafe Gentile, and Tony's. All a bit different. So you've got Italian, Jewish, and then like Tony's is like trend, trendy pe- like Instagram pizza. Like, it's amazing. That's not shade, by the way. But, like, oily, like, burnt cuppy pepperonis. And just, like, when you see Tony's on Instagram, you're like, oh, god damn. You know? So juicy. Juicy. Um, So there's, there's your, there's your, you know, Italian, Jewish, hipster. What else do you need, bro? Call it how I see it. None of it's shade. Um, burgers. Dick Ann's. You gotta go to Dick Ann's. It's been around since 52 or something that opened up after the war. It's a flat burger. They press their buns. It comes swimming in gravy. I don't know how to explain it. You have to go to Dick Ann's though. It's it's very good. I got the wrong burger the first time I went there, and I think I gave it like a 7 out of 10. Um, but you go and get the double cheeseburger. Don't fuck around with lettuce and stuff. Because this your burger's swimming in gravy. Not swimming. Your burger is a top gravy. Anyways, you gotta go to Dick Hans. Loic has a sensational burger. Like. Mm. And that's what's fire about Loic, is it's like you don't you don't necessarily go there. I don't know, it's changed now though. You do go there for the food now. But like because it had to earn its stripes with with the with their food, they worked hard. Anyway, it's dope. Uh, burger list continues. Depenard le pickup. 
you're up there St. Zotic, dope ass street name. You're in the mile X. You're walking around. You're walking around all day in the mile end, visiting little boutiques, grabbing a coffee. You're grabbing two coffees. You're going up to Little Italy. You're going up to Little Italy to check it out. And maybe you do dinner in Little Italy, but you're you're grabbing lunch at Dep Le Pickup, and they have it's a Dep NR. It's a corner store that has sandwiches and burgers, and they like it's just one of those hidden gems, like diners, drive-ins, and drives type shit. You know where like they just got some fire ass like ex like Michelin star chef in the kitchen, and the, they just it goes extremely hard. Uh, Nouveau Palais. Um, in the mile end, amazing burger, just a cool place to grab a bite. Appropriately priced, good, friendly, quick service, um, maybe 20 tables. It's got booth seating everywhere. And, um, Nouveau Palais just has a unfuck withable, juicy, large burger. It is, and it comes and you cut it in half and the inside is pink and it's about that thick and it's just really yummy and like a beef burger bro and then uniburger if you want a smash burger uniburger your smash burgers at uniburger bro enough said it's your shake shack it's your it's your montreal shake shack enough said um poutine my favorite poutine in the city patati patata which i told you about to go get that soul fish sandwich it is I like my favorite. I like thin crispy fries. I like a chicken based gravy and I like a cold cheese curd on my poutine. That's just me, bro. Do you? They also put a couple of black olives on there. Patati Patata has my favorite poutine in the city. Um so that's your that's my fave and that's the niche. That's for the connoisseur, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to enter you know, a deep sleep after a poutine, go to Patati Patata. Covers all the bases, has a little bit of, it's a little different, you know. Um, I got La Banquise, tourist, my words here, tourist gong show crowd pleaser. Yep. You can get a Tex-Mex poutine. You can get a hot dog poutine. You can get an Italian poutine with meatballs on it. It's open 24-7. It's a fucking crazy place. But if you have friends in town, you can go there and get a, because the turnover is insane. You can go get a hot, fresh poutine. Um, I would s- probably suggest the pogo or the hot dog poutine at La Banquise. And it's a scene. You it's it, you got to go. You got to go check it out. It's a shit show. Um, and that's the Tourist Trap Instagram. And then if you're looking for a classic Quebecois, dark gravy, wet Quebec fry. Because a traditional Quebec fry is a thick cut and it's a little soggy. Green spot, right over here in my neighborhood, which is also on the brunch menu. Um, but the green spot poutine has a dark beef gravy that is gloopy glop like Augustus gloop. And you got to eat it quick because that cheese will melt. And I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. No, I hate soupy poutine. But that's my food list, bro. That's my F1 guide to peeps, F1 food guide to peeps visiting Montreal. And you can use it when it's not F1 time. And so now, whenever someone comes to Montreal and they're like, where should I eat? I can just send them this video. I'm a genius. Thank you for watching. We did episode... Anyway, that's it. Montreal food tour guide. Okay? I didn't talk much about the locations. But if you visit the places on this list, and I'll put it in the caption of this video for YouTube... You will see a great, great cross section of Montreal, and you can, you can take that with you. Okay, all right. Peace. Enjoy. Oh my God. Enjoy. That that's all such amazing, amazing food. Enjoy.